25 speaks and says, there were 10 virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. And it's speaking about the church world. People think many times uh, the word of God is for the unbeliever. No, it's for you and I. That's why it's called the Testament. When Jesus Christ died, anytime somebody dies, they leave a will, don't they? So it's God's will for you to read his word as his son, as his daughter, and receive your inheritance. Are you ready? Now watch this. Matthew 25 speaks and tells us, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They had a backup. You see, when the anointing of God begins to speak to you and begins to lead you and guide you, he said, my sheep know my voice. And when God's voice begins to minister to you, sometimes he'll say, hey, bring an extra something in your purse tonight or, or bring an extra $5 and, and keep it in your car. Come on, that's called wisdom, is it not? How many times has God begun to speak to you to do a specific thing and you didn't know why you were doing it yet, but you did it and God answered you through what you did? Amen? Now watch this. It speaks and it says, They that were wise took vessels with their lamps, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and they slept. And at midnight, everyone say midnight. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom, come on out and greet him. Then all of the virgins rose and they trimmed their lamps. But I want to stop here for a minute. At midnight, that's when you need a miracle the most. That's when you're in between today and tomorrow. And you said, now God, you said weeping indoors for a night, but joy got to come in the morning. So now by the time the sun rises, Lord, I'm expecting. Wait, wait, wait. I said by the time the sun rises, Lord, I I'm expecting. You can't collect what you don't expect. That's what disappointment does. You see, the devil does everything the exact opposite of God. So if faith stirs you, then fear troubles you, right? So that's why God gave that command through his son, Jesus Christ, to let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The devil tries to trouble your heart morning, noon, and night. But you see, when you got the oil of joy or the spirit of heaviness, oh, no way, come on. I'm talking to some people tonight that you know how to get your joy and you know how to retain it and keep it because that's part of your inheritance. Everyone say, joy is mine. The joy of the Lord is your strength as you begin to praise his name. in your heart, you begin to be most like those people who were on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room, and what happened? It said they were all filled. And all of a sudden, it didn't matter what they had on. It didn't matter where they were going, where they'd been. It didn't matter well, the way that their hair was combed. All that matters is that, ooh, I've gotten drunk on the Holy Ghost. Come on. It's time for a new wine to come. It's time for a new wine to come upon you. It's time for you to come and drink because the master's calling. And let me tell you something, when that new wine anointing becomes a bubbling up in your spirit, God begins to fill you once again. That's what I do. I'm your Holy Ghost bartender tonight. I didn't plan on this, God. <laughs> but that's what he just told me to tell you tonight. You're going to get high in the Holy Ghost. High above every situation.
and saith the Lord. No, I'm talking right now that there's a cloud of glory coming down in this entire atmosphere even now. God began to just speak to me. He said, there's a